Hey, it's Christopher with another episode of What's Brewing, and today we're talking about the 10 things I think you should know about Apple Business Essentials, part one. Let's roll that beautiful B-roll. Christopher here, and I'm really excited to be talking about something that Apple recently announced, and that's Apple Business Essentials. And I'm sure if you're a technical person or a lay person who's heard the news, you may have already watched the launch video. I'll put a link right here where you can check out all the details about Apple Business Essentials. This video is going to be split up into two because there's so much to talk about. A couple things to say up front. I'm going to be talking about a lot of terms and a lot of services. I'm going to do my best to put links to videos that we've already made or to resources that you can check out that may explain those features or those services more in depth. Before we talk about what Apple Business Essentials is and the things that I think that are noteworthy, I want to give a little bit of historical context on how we got here. Early on in the Apple management ecosystem, there was a tool called iPhone Configuration Utility. It was made for both Mac and for PC, and it allowed you to install something called a mobile config payload. This was XML that had instructions that would tell the device how to configure itself. From there, a couple years later, was introduced something called Apple Configurator 1. For organizations that had large amounts of devices, this became a very important tool to be able to manage those devices and even determine whether or not the device is personally owned or if it's organizationally owned. In that same time period, a program was introduced called the Volume Purchase Program. To that date, things like iTunes and an Apple ID were needed to activate that device and to install apps. But when you're dealing with large fleets of devices, you don't want to be dealing with personal Apple IDs. So Apple introduced the idea of redemption codes where you could give a code and be able to deploy an app with that code as a license. From there, then they introduced the idea of using an Apple ID to invite someone to have a piece of software that was a part of their purchase history, sort of on loan or on lease, but then be able to return it back if that person or device left the organization. From there, they introduced something called device-based app assignment, where no Apple ID was needed at all. Apple would use the volume purchase program service to tell the tool like Apple Configurator and later a mobile device management solution that this app had a license and that the user didn't need to enter in any credentials. Along with that, Apple Configurator was a key tool, but we needed a way for devices to be enrolled over the air. And that's where the device enrollment program comes in. Now, from here, something was introduced in 2016 called Apple School Manager. At this point, Apple had been building tools for both education and enterprise. And education had some very unique needs um, that Apple wanted to meet through some unique tools. Apple School Manager was introduced in 2016 and then Apple Business Manager in 2018. In that same area of time, Apple had already introduced something called Apple Configurator 2 a couple years prior that we moved away from really managing a device with a tool like Apple Configurator, although it's still a viable tool and definitely usable, to moving to over-the-air solutions and allowing things like Apple School Manager and Apple Business Manager to help in something called automated enrollment, where when a device activates, out of the box, it's going to get enrolled in a mobile device management solution and an IT administrator is going to be able to push apps and settings or send commands to that device. So here we are. This is where we ask the question, what is Apple Business Essentials? Well, the honest answer is it's the next iteration, it's the next evolution of where Apple has been going with device management and features they're offering to customers. Just like tools like iPhone Configuration Utility and Apple Configurator, Apple Configurator 2, the Device Enrollment Program and Volume Purchase Program serve to help customers to manage and deploy devices, Apple Business Essentials is aimed at helping you to do that but in one portal, one hub where you have all these things that you can do. Now the next thing is, is this for everyone? Apple Business Essentials is meant to complement the existing solutions in the industry, but for those who either don't have a mobile device management solution or are looking for something that is all-in-one, Apple Business Essentials is aimed at doing that. Now, in my experience with the beta, which has only been for about a week, I found that everything that was in Apple Business Manager is in Apple Business Essentials. 
So let's talk about a few things here to clear the air on things that I think you need to know. I'm going to get through five of those things in this video, give my thoughts on those five things, and then I'll link to the next video where I'll talk again about the second half of this. So let's start off with number one. The first thing we have to be mindful of is this is beta software. If you're not familiar with what beta software is, it's an opportunity for a developer to allow the public or a small select group of individuals to test their software, put it through its paces, for them to do analytics, get feedback, and make sure from a quality assurance and feature perspective that it is meeting and beating their expectations for the product and hopefully satisfying and pleasing their customers. So before you go and share your strong opinions or thoughts or feelings about Apple Business Essentials, my recommendation is to A, number one, sign up here. Uh, I'll put a link right here where you can sign up for Apple Business Essentials. Um, don't worry if you're an Apple Business Manager customer, it will just create essentially a new tenant. You will sign in with that same Apple ID and you'll get to see the beta portal. Additionally, if you feel like there are things that Apple can improve or you're seeing some potential product issues, I'll put a link right here where Apple has set up an entire website for you to leave feedback about their products. Number two, it is a subscription. So when you look at Apple Business Essentials, that's where I think it gets maybe a little confusing for some. Is this a new product? What is it? Well, yes and no. It, it's both a new product but also an evolution. When you log into Apple Business Essentials, you'll notice that everything that you've seen previously is there in Apple Business Manager. What you will see that's new is a few new features, which I'll talk about, but the big thing is a subscription button. You're able to subscribe and be able to add on or tack on additional modular services. Primarily, the focus is device management. Apple Business Essentials includes an MDM in that web portal. Previously, with Apple Business and Apple School Manager, you had to go buy a third-party MDM. You would connect that third-party MDM to Apple Business Manager or Apple School Manager. And then from there, really, Apple Business Manager helped to deploy apps, helped with enrollment, but didn't do any of the management. I think what Apple's trying to do here is allow this to be a one-stop shop where both all of your sort of back-end administration for app acquisition and managing your devices and, and knowing how many you've got and the serial numbers and all the ancillary that comes with being an admin, but then also doing all the configuration of it so that way it's literally in one in one portal. So it's a subscription that you're adding. This is going to get you things like device management, the ability to do Apple Care Plus and devices. It's going to get you iCloud storage. And as an added benefit of the management, you're going to have devices that are secure out of the box and so that you have peace of mind about what's going on with them. So number three, enrollment. In my testing and experience, I found that when you turned on the subscription, one of the things that appeared in the MDM settings was a, a Apple Business Essentials so that you could add devices that were in your purchase history or, or associated with your Apple account number could be enrolled using automated device enrollment. Now we've got a, a video about that right here that we'll put if you want to learn more about what automated enrollment is. But we found that to be one of the ways for institutionally owned devices. I'm sure this is also meant to complement those single device plans where it's not really associated to a user and it's just meant to be uh, a device that may be multi-use potentially. Additionally, you can use managed Apple IDs to do account-driven user enrollment. Now, what does that mean? Apple has three different types of enrollment, automated enrollment, device enrollment, and user enrollment or account-driven user enrollment. Device enrollment really means I'm going to some kind of a URL or an app to sign in and then enroll my device. But that is not present here as far as I can tell. If you found it, please comment below, let me know. I still have limited experience with the product, so certainly may have not discovered it, but I noticed the primary way for you to enroll a device is either an institutionally owned device with automated enrollment and a personally owned device using account-driven user enrollment. With account-driven user enrollment, you use a managed Apple ID to sign into the device in the settings that will allow you to enroll it. So, this is really interesting and important because I think what Apple is doing here with managed Apple IDs and Apple Business Essentials is to drive this idea of scoping to a user as much as scoping to a device. If you're a Windows admin or in the, in the Active Directory world, this is a very familiar workflow to you and I think it will resonate with many customers. Number four, managed Apple IDs. 
Uh, managed Apple IDs are not a new concept. As I mentioned previously, Apple School Manager was introduced in 2016, and with the release of Apple School Manager, the idea of a managed Apple ID. Now there are two different types of IDs. There are personal IDs that you will create to go to the Apple Store or to log in with iCloud or iTunes. And when managed Apple IDs, they were limited because they were aimed at students. Um, because of COPPA, the Child Online Protection and Privacy Act, they have limited access to commerce sites. They're primarily there to let you log in and administer tools like Apple Business Manager, Apple School Manager and now Apple Business Essentials and they did allow for sign in to iCloud services so that you could collaborate. With Apple Business Essentials they're going to continue to perform that same function but also now be able to use as a part of enrollment. That's not to say that they have not been used for that over the years that was introduced a couple years ago uh, with things like shared iPad or user enrollment where they were finding their functionality but we're seeing in this tool specifically that it will be the primary driver for personally owned devices to be enrolled. So this is new and exciting for us. Now, additional to using these managed Apple IDs, one of the things that you can do and have been able to do for some time is to use Federation. This allows Azure After Directory to be the thing that authenticates and gets you into the service with Apple Business Essentials. Again, this is not new, but is now being brought to the forefront of the conversation. If you're not familiar about what Federation is, I'll put a link right here where you can check that out and learn more about it. For organizations that have a lot of users that are already familiar with Office 365 or Azure, um, this is a very, I think, integral part of your deployment and your workflow. And if you haven't checked it out, now's probably the time to take a look at it. Number five. As previously mentioned, iCloud now gets center stage. So those managed Apple IDs are going to be important to the service as it allows you to enroll your device, it allows you to sign in that device and then gain access to services like iCloud. With your Apple Business Essential subscription, this will give your users more storage to collaborate, but more importantly, sync all their key data. Over the last few years, things like Google Workspace, as well as OneDrive and Microsoft and Box and Dropbox, we're seeing more and more and more cloud providers driving their users to be able to store their data in the cloud. This makes it much easier to synchronize your data across computers, to collaborate with teams, and in the event of some kind of, you know, catastrophic failure of your device, simply sign into the web or just set up a new device and sign back into that cloud service. Apple is now bringing that idea to the forefront with iCloud. I personally love iCloud. I use it every single day. It's been in the corporate space with managed Apple IDs, but again, Apple Business Essentials, I think is moving us forward to it being a centerpiece where a user just has to go to one site, to do everything and sync up all their data. This makes sure things are backed up and if they're moving to a new device, they can restore very quickly. So let's review what we've talked about. We went over the historical context of where Apple's tools and services have been going for quite some time. Apple Business Essentials is the evolution and the combination of many of these tools that previously have been separate. Remember, Apple Configurator and VPP were separate tools. And even as we move forward, VPP and DEP, or Device Enrollment Program, were separate tools. Apple Business and Apple School Manager merged them in, but the, the management piece was always separate, some third party. With Apple Business Essentials, it is now merging these two features together to, to really have a seamless experience for the customers that Apple's aiming for, which again, at, at, at launch is small business customers. That's the target audience for this product. Now, it is in beta, so you definitely need to leave your feedback, put it through its paces, but make sure you let Apple know, the developer, so that way they can improve that product. It's a subscription, and there's going to be different subscriptions that meet different needs. Right now, that subscription is free if you're trying it out, but again, when it launches in spring 2022, expect to navigate over to the right subscriptions that meet your needs. Enrollment's going to be a big piece. Because the MDM is now going to be built into the product itself, you're going to be enrolling with the device, um, either user enrollment or automated enrollment. Managed Apple IDs are brought to the forefront. Again, certainly not introduced here. And many of the features that I discussed in this video have been in place, but we're now seeing them as a more essential tool and, and at the forefront of that management deployment process. Last but not least, iCloud. 
Uh, we're seeing iCloud and collaboration tools becoming more and more popular. People love the service and Apple has built things like caching or content caching to aid in the delivery of things that are either apps and books as well as iCloud data. Primarily that's been used with shared iPad in the education space, but certainly not only in that area. And as an IT administrator, knowing that Apple has services to help my users get their data faster is exciting to me and compelling. If you want to learn about what content caching is, we have a video here, right here, linked. That way you can check it out and learn more about it. Well, this is just part one. Part two is coming just around the corner. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. If you like what we're producing, don't forget to like and subscribe. It absolutely helps our channel and to produce these videos. As always, we hope that you're doing well. We hope that you're staying safe and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.